Three. Three. Four, three, three. Oh, it's like it was meant to happen this then. Oh, yeah. Why is this not letting me go live? Oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, and I've, I've gone up in the world. I've started putting um, lemon in my water. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's fancy, isn't it? So that's I think good. we're live on face. No, we're not even. It's good for digestion, apparently. <clears throat> Good for your metabolism. We're, we're live on YouTube, but we're not live on Facebook because... People know about my shitting pattern then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good intro. <laughs> Great intro. This, this is what happens when well. you don't know when we're going live. Why is it waiting for live video? Ah, oh, Facebook is so annoying. Um, oh, it's the right one. Right, well, we'll just go live without Facebook. Sod Facebook. Sod you, Mark Zuckerberg. So welcome to Talk. That's a great intro, isn't it? We've started really well. You know what? This It was working fine, and then I got up, and now it's not working, so I don't know. Well, Talking YouTube short, 99.2. Because we're no closer to 100, by the looks of it. Straight onto YouTube. However, we are close to football, potentially. Some football. That's not in Belarus. Yeah. The German it's Bundesliga. Not it's not, not in France now either. It's not in France. No. Well, they stopped France and um, Holland, don't they? And Belgium, yeah. if you count Belgium. Do, do they play football in Belgium? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I thought they just like threw clogs at each other and stuff. Clogs but, in Belgium. Uh, in Belgium. That's, in Holland. <laughs> That's in Holland. It's all that weird Europe mountain bit, isn't it? Yeah, it's just that little part of France, really. Yeah. Um. So how have we been? How's lockdown treating you? I think that side is it all, to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Look, I'm home. I'm safe. What more can you do? You know, there's the, everyone's got their own problems, but there's people out there with worse problems than me. But yeah, yeah this, sure. uh, this week's really dragged for me. Starting to feel it a bit. Yeah. And the weather's not helping. Yeah, I think, yeah. End of last week and the weather into the weekend were fantastic. And then it's just fallen off a cliff on it. It yeah, doesn't it's... look like it's going get, to get any better anytime soon. I think that was a. The one thing that was keeping everyone in a bit better spirits, but I suppose in a way though, it might it might help the situation that people aren't going to go out now. It might sure. just make things a bit quicker. Keep people inside, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, well, I guess we'll see, won't we? Um, we will. We will indeed. I think Facebook is up and running now. Right. So we're good. To, we're good on all. All platforms. All platforms um, communicating. So let's have, let's start. Last week we asked about the is it the Carragher challenge. Is that what is that what everyone's calling it? Well, it's the it's Carragher who set it, I think. So oh, we're I setting. Didn't know that. I don't know. That one. Setting a team that have never played or well, that from the same haven't played for the same team or the same country. Is that yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Right, so I think I've done that right then. Um, so let's start off in goal. Who's, who's everyone got? I've gone for the extrovert Paraguayan who likes to take a, a free kick and a penalty. Uh, Chilever. Nice. Nineties hero. Absolutely. Bit of a maverick. See, I follow the same route to you, Raggy. I went for yeah. Brazilian Chini. Rogerio Cini. Okay. But what, what era were he from? 90s, well, to two, early 2000s, but it, I think he retired in like late 2010s. All right. But again, he loved, he loved a free kick and he loved a penalty. And he was, I think, he was he the, he the keeper for the World Cup winners squad uh, in, or in the World Cup winners squad in 2002. That's kind of a weak link and it's kind of a waste of a Brazilian, I feel. But it's yeah. the only way I could make it's, it work. It's a big, it's a big shout to go Brazilian keeper. 
<laughs> but I just thought if I go Brazilian keeper, I've I've kept my options open outfield. You'll understand. Okay. All right. Well, I went Good for the you. what seemed to be the the big choice on Twitter, and that was Oblak from um, Atletico Madrid. And Slovi- yeah. is he Slovenian or Slovakian? One of them. Maybe Serbian. Maybe Serbian, something like that. I, I, I genuinely don't Eastern know. Europe somewhere. <laughs> As we've heard already, my Slovenian, my um, European ain't great. <laughs> Good European. Yeah. <laughs> Brexit means Brexit and all that. <laughs> I could tell. But it's a, it's a good option, though, because he's yeah. obviously an elite goalkeeper and he's from a... Yeah, I'd, I'd ruled him out just because I'd seen so many people put him in and I thought that's a bit of a cheat for me. A bit of a cop-out because I'd never even thought of him. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's why I'd ruled him out for my team. So, are we doing right back first for the yeah. defenders? Can do. So, I changed mine just before we came on and I'm hoping that it works. It should do, but I've gone for Paolo Maldini. As a right back? Yeah. We played right back a bit. I'm sure he did. He played, he played left back more. A hell of a lot more. Or centre back. He play anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> OK, all right. No, anywhere fine. along the back. Fine. I'm like Bielsa. Yeah. Just play anyone anywhere. They're good. They can play anywhere. Yeah. And he was good. Yeah. He was good. And I'm good. glad that I got to see him play in the flesh. At Ellen Road. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We were talking about that, weren't we, the other night about some of the players that came. Yeah, and, we were uh, talking about one play, one, yeah. and played Ellen Road, yeah. Absolutely mental. Um I've gone for I've gone for a Brazilian at right back. I've gone for um Carlos Alberto from the uh, from those seventies teams and just marauding right back. Um but yeah, what a player. Before that I did have Cafu. Who's like yeah. any sort of eighties, well, ninety growing up in eighties, nineties, Cafu is the the right back. Yeah. Well I wanted Cafu, but I've gone for Maldini at left back, you see, so I couldn't because they both played for Milan. So So yeah, that's where I went. That was where my thought process went. So I went Carlos Alberto at right back. Young Ben? I've kept it a bit more modern. Uh and I've gone for Philip Lam at right back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I suppose he was the he's the right back of the the twenty tens, I guess. Yeah. He's not he's not, not like the longer. kind he's not the kind of standard right like he's not the kind of right back that we use to today, you know, like the Trent Alexander Arnold mm. and the you know, the kind of overlapping attacking fullbacks who are kind of the I'm I, maybe even the the last of the the generic right back, but I mean his his yeah. delivery and his passing ability were unbelievable. Obviously Pep uh, moved him into like an older midfielder role, and he did. The, he's done this. Uh, the, the the same has been done with Kimmich at Bayern now as well in at Ger- in Germany. So you can kind of see the kind of similarities there. But like I said, his his passing ability, you know, and just it was just unbelievable. So mm. I put him in just with a view to maybe moving into midfield if he needs to go to a back three. You see, I thought about it far too much. <laughs> <laughs> you probably thinking about, about tactics and everything. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> So let's go to the other side, the left. Maldini for me. Yeah, and, all day and me. All day long. I went for all Maldini in his natural position. Well, <laughs> I went for Robertson at Liverpool. It was a good shot. And I thought, yeah, that is probably the best Scottish player of the last 20 years. I'd say, maybe, not, what he's done. Not saying much, though, is it that? No, no, yeah. You've gone away from your McCoists. I mean, who, who are we going to be comparing to, like, Alan Hutton? Yeah. <laughs> and if I can't even think of any other... Um, like I suppose it's Kieran Tierney, who has quite a bit of promise. Yeah. Whether he'll reach that now, I don't know. Is that quite Arsenal a nice injury at Arsenal, isn't it? Yeah. So your centre-backs... Um, I'll go um, Danny Blind and Diego Godan am my centre halves. Is Godan Uruguayan? Uruguayan, yeah. Yeah. And uh, 
Atletico Madrid and Inter, I think, for these European yeah. teams. Yeah. I've gone for Van Dijk and Nemanja Vidic. That's a, that's a solid pairing, that. Yeah, it's a solid good. pairing. I thought. Do you remember when we said before we came on, I said my back line's not going to concede many. Albeit, mm. keeper might be a bit suspect. But you can, gonna... have, you can have that with that defence. That's what I mean. It's yeah, just yeah. a brick wall, really. Your defence could sit back and your keeper could just run forward. Well, a bit could... like <laughs> a bit like the monk in Mean Machine. <laughs> <laughs> so I've gone you for... Could, Ku... You could stick Bailey Peacock Farrell behind that, that defence <laughs> yeah. and you'd be all right. <laughs> Fucking I've gone for something. Vincent Company because I think he just epitomises a centre-back like it, it was always, I remember it from like playing football manager before he went to City. He was like the, a wonder kid. Mm. And then he went to City and he was quite a, a low price as well. But Thinking then from what he did, what he did from City, he sort of went from maybe a mid table Premier League player to being the Premier League winning captain multiple times. And I think just his story is. is been really good, and then I went for a youth player in Kuba. Well, the youth player, an up and coming sort of player in Kuba, who's at um, Napoli, who's been linked to quite a few Premier League sides as well. I think. Yeah, I think the the point that you made on on um, company is quite valid actually because he's he's almost well. I mean, I think they've already got part of the um, training ground named after him because they, they named the pitches after the legends now. Um, but he genuinely is kind of one of the real legends of Manchester City. Really, I know he's, you know, you look at the in, in terms of modern day and how they're known now. You know, because they were founded in two thousand and nine. Um, he's kind of one of the the kind of staple main points um, of that team. Um, and I had him, I had him in mind until I changed, I changed it actually. To be fair, um, and to be fair, probably would have slotted in. I don't know why I took him out, but yeah. yeah. So that's his defence. Um, have we gone three in midfield? Yeah. Yeah. So we're just going to go all three each. Do you want to go first, Raggy? Yeah. Yeah, all right. Um, I have to have a Leeds connection in there. So um, Billy Bremner was one of the first names I'd gone for. Uh, so it's Bre- Bremner, Michael Ballack and Zinedine Zidane. So that's not a bad midfield yeah. three, is it? That's solid. You're uh, you're going to win the ball and keep it. I think with those yeah. three, There's no doubt about it. So Zidane, I, there's two names that I had to go for first, and Zidane was obviously one just because. Is be Zidane? Is the is the player of my generation? I think like, yeah. Of, well, yeah. certainly of his gen, certainly of his generation before you met him, Ronaldo. So I think he was the best best player there was at that time. So um, yeah, that's my three midfielders. I've gone very similar to you. Um, I've also got Zidane and I've also got Billy Bremner in Martin. Um, but I've gone for Gaza as well. Nice. nice. I've gone for Gaza. I've got I've got two re I've got a reinforcer in Bremner. I've got, you know, the passing ability of Zidane and then I've just got Gaza that can just do what the fuck he wants. Yeah. <laughs> Free roll. Yeah. Free roll. Well, I've got number ten. I've gone with um, Angolo Kante Solid. just for what he did at Leicester, really. He, mm. he pretty much came from nowhere and then became probably one of the best defensive midfielders in the world. Um, then I've gone for Christian Eriksen because I thought for a few years at Spurs he was just unplayable mm. and dead ball situations, even though they probably won't get a look in with my strikers. But um, <laughs> then I've gone... Uh, Gazza as well which yeah. only just came to me today and I thought I could put him in said that I didn't have any English players and I thought who could I have in the middle that doesn't match with any of these because you could have gone for I mean I'd have gone for Skulls mm-hmm. who I thought even though Man United and we don't like Man United and whatever but such an underrated player really even though everyone raved about him he should have done a lot more for England yeah, I mean, he was, like he, he was playing on the left hand side. I kind of before me, really, but I know he was playing on the left hand side for England. Yeah, but, I mean, you look at like the two central midfielders at the time in 
Gerard and, and Lampard, it's kind of tough to kind of, for me anyway, to to justify but moving. The argument of that decade was, can they play together? Well, yeah. And it never really worked because we never really did anything. No, we didn't. You're right. Yeah. So on to strikers, wingers, whatever. Attackers, we'll call them. The front three. Has anyone yeah. gone for a false <laughs> nine? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> No. I'd say mine's a bit more of a target man. I've got a target man. I've got a target man. Right? Let's all say our target man then. Okay. Start off. Ben, go I've first. Got, I've got... I've, oh, go on. Come, Come on, Ben. Lewandowski. Ooh. Raggy. Shearer. I've gone for big Drogba. Didier. Nice. All solid shouts. Yeah, yeah. That's a, that's a decent I, front three in itself, to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, true, true. And then, so I've got Shearer up top, and then either side of him, David Silver. Who I just, I think he's one of the most cultured and and beautiful to watch footballers that's ever been in the Premier League, and uh, Messi. Yeah. <laughs> who can? Who has got the free free role in my team? He can go do the fuck what he wants. But yeah, Silver, Shearer, and Messi. Up <coughs> I went for Messi and. Um... Cristiano Ronaldo, just mainly because for the last 10 years, it's been about them two, hasn't it? Yeah. As much as I'll say all day long, Messi is the better out of the two, they are the two best players of the last 10, 15 years. Yeah. It's funny shit to yeah, say that, though, because the, the Ronaldo and Messi debate will literally go on forever now. Yeah. Like, because it's so, it's, it's so unusual to have two players of the same calibre that they are playing at, playing at the same time, in the same kind of era. Mm. So they can yeah. be directly compared, but you can't compare the two for me, I don't think. I think they're completely different players. In oh, yeah, without a doubt, yeah. On a completely different planet to what most players do anyway. I mean, we've we've just listed, a, a, you know, 11, well, I ain't yet, but good footballers. But you, you compare, like, I've also gone for David Silver and Messi. And as good as as good as David Silver is, and he, he is unbelievable. Messi's like so so far above in what he can do. Yeah, yeah. Like even look players like like your flair players like Ronaldinho, you know, and all those kind of players who played with him at Barcelona, he still stuck out like a sore thumb. It's still he was still one of the best players on the pitch from he's, you know bursting onto the scene. Messi just has that ultimate football ability he could just do anything with a football whereas with all due respect to Ronaldo they can do a lot with a football but he's got there on his physique and his athletic ability yeah. that yeah. gets him up to that level whereas Messi Messi could put on 10 stone and he'd still do the same things Yeah. <laughs> in the I same agree. way that like you look at Maradona he could yeah. probably Smash five grams of coke in and go do the same thing. <laughs> well, they probably did. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that, that uh, documentary where, that uh, documented his time in Napoli that was on the TV recently. I can't remember what it was on. It, it was on Channel 4, yeah. I, yeah, absolutely I brilliant. That. I loved it. I loved it. But like, it basically said that, you know, kind of from Wednesday, you didn't see it. Like, he was just, yeah. he was just gone. <laughs> and then he'd just show up and just, well, he'd show up on a after on a Thursday and be ready, you know, ready for, to play on a Sunday, and then and then go again, and you won't see him again until Wednesday. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. God yeah. Knows what. But then p- producing that and literally taking a team that were doing nothing and just dragging them up to was it two Serie A titles while he were there? The only Something, time they yeah. ever won it. Unbelievable. I I watching that, I couldn't believe the reaction that. Rival fans were give against Napoli like they were literally like hated by everybody, <laughs> like yeah. despised by everybody is like just a piece of shit basically. And yeah. then like Maradona kind of glamorized them in in a way and made them like a, a European force, I suppose at the time. Yeah, I think I think I think the Messi Ronaldo thing as well is. For me, my personal opinion is that Messi is a, a fo- is a footballer, is an athlete, you know, and that's how he's seen around the world. Is Ronaldo's more of a celebrity? Do you know, he's a bit, he's a bit more like the the star factor that, mm. that David Beckham has, for example. 
Yeah, I think he's, he's, he's a huge amount more ego, isn't he, than, than the Messi side. Of but him. I mean, you know, he is an exceptional footballer as well. It's not like it's not style over substance. He, he can deliver as well. I think he knows that his ego says that, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So when we were discussing this like through the week, I sort of thought in my head, could you do a Leeds United team? So a Leeds United team that haven't played with each other. And the answer and consider- is, you can it- if you stay up until quarter to one in the morning thinking about <laughs> it. <laughs> well, um, I'm pu- I've I'm not pu- done mine yet. In goal. <laughs> oh, fucking hell! Right, we, we'll talk about it properly when we've all done it. But mine yeah, were shambles. So this is so now- going to be for everyone who wants to get involved. Get involved on Twitter, whatever. Send in your Leeds United teams that haven't played with each other. I might message yeah. like LUFC stats or something to see if he can back up who's played with who. I don't know. Yeah. There must be a way of doing it because there is. Uh, when we were discussing it, weren't we, Ben? That there's a bit of an yeah. overlap because before the transfer window, you could sign anyone. I think you had Radaby and Strachan, who yeah. like had two months before one left and the what well, one came in, then the other left. Literally, yeah, yeah. So maybe we might put a bit of a a thing in there that they had to be like over three months or something like that. I don't know, a half a year. We'll make rules what? that make it easy for us. Yeah, exactly. Then... Yeah, <laughs> so it's 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 solid. <laughs> that's what rules are there for. Breaking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Or loop okay. or finding a minute loophole that we can make things easy for ourselves. Yeah. So before we move on, I just want to talk about um, our sponsors. So we've got the the social maze who uh, offer social media management for. Ninety-nine pounds and upwards. If you're struggling with your social media, get in touch with them on Twitter, Facebook, uh, on the website, and um, yeah, see what they can offer you. They might be able to help out. They can take over mine if they want, because I can't bear to look at it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I aren't active on social media much anymore because it just pains me. It's just all the same thing right now, isn't it? It was just the, when I saw the it's guy. I told right you, right when I'm in, when I mentioned in the group chat, and I. Earlier, I said that when I saw the guy that was complaining that he can stand in a queue at Aldi to do his shopping, but he can't go fishing. I was just about, it. yeah, fucking, I am completely done with social media. I'm done. That's that's see, nailing coffin. People are looking at it in a bad way. Why not take your earphones, put some music in? You stood outside in the sun. I suppose not today. You won't be, but you stood outside. Yeah. And just you, you've got to go do it. So make the most of it. Yeah. If That's the thing, go... in it. You've got to get, you've got to go do it. You've got to get some food in to eat because we're on lockdown. You don't have to go fishing. I think that's yeah. as simple as that. Everyone has to have some food in the house because everyone has to eat. So yeah. one person out of that family goes and gets the food in from the, from the thing. That's the difference in it. Yeah. Not not going out on the riverbank when anyone could then. If you just open that up, you just it's a can of worms. Yeah, yeah I mean, you could on a standard day before this, you've probably gone fishing and gone to a place where you see two people in 12 hours. Yeah. But if people are out going fishing now because everyone has to stay in, they're going to say, well, why can't I go fishing? Why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? Then you have yeah. people doing whatever they want and, and more people dying, basically. Yeah. yeah. We'd, we'd see a lot and of that, amateur Robson Greens going to. out fishing. <laughs> I want to do plenty of things, but... Yeah, yeah. But if you do want something to do in your supermarket shopping line, then think about a Leeds United team that never played together. Yeah. Because <laughs> I can guarantee your time will go quickly. Before you know it, you'll be in front of queue, ready to go get your beans and whatever you need. <laughs> no word about... I mean, when did when when did you send it throughout day? It must have been, like, early afternoon, like... And, that yeah, I were up until quarter to, quarter to when I sent the message of my complete team and then realised it didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> and then I did it morning. Well, I sent it and then started doing some other things and totally forgot about it. So, yeah, we'll do that this week. See what um, everyone wants to do on Twitter. See what teams they come up with. I think it'll be quite interesting. Yeah, I had some um, some shocks to say the least. It wasn't exactly a strong Leeds United time. The midfield was strong, but everything else was a bit of a shambles. I think you've got a lot of shit yeah. to choose from. Let's be honest. Well, yeah. Yeah, we won't get yeah. into that just yet. We'll save that for next week because, you know, football and that. 
Yeah. <laughs> so speaking of football, it looks like we might get some football back. Yeah. Uh, be it the Spanish and the Germans are looking at kicking off again, middle of May ish. I mean, yeah. the Spanish can start training again from Monday. Um, and is a German looking at sixteenth of May to start properly? Something like that. It's the middle of May, isn't it? Yeah. So that'd be good. I'm looking forward to seeing some football. Luckily, I've got BT Sport this year, so I'll get some German football. And if you want to watch Spanish football, there's it's on YouTube. You can watch Las Palmas if you want. If you're, you, that, um... if you're struggling that much for football. <laughs> If lockdown's really got to you, you can yeah. last hour, man. Have you um have you seen what Monts and Gladbach have spoke about doing? Um they've given season ticket holders an option to buy a cardboard cutout of themselves to be placed in the stadium for when the home games are played. Oh, they've got to buy it. I think so, yeah. Oh, I thought it was free that they were just doing it just so it looks like they were there kind of thing. I mean, I don't know how I feel about it. I think it's kinda of cool but kind of weird. It's a bit weird. What they should do is invest in loads of little speakers that you can connect to. So you can sit at home with some headphones on and all do chants and stuff like that while the game's going on. That'd be better. <laughs> It'll be better. Get some atmosphere going. Or I'm copywriting go... that, actually. That's my intellectual property. <laughs> or they could That's what I'm go... doing next, for next week. They could go full Man City and just start playing fan noises through the speakers. You could do, yeah. We don't need it. We've got that white noise that we can just turn on. (laughs) (laughs) Norwich are going forward again. Yeah, exactly. They're on the attack. The opposition are on the attack. (laughs) Turn on the white noise. I actually missed that. I wasn't there. Um, It was was one of the Borough games that did it because there was that um, fella from Borough TV that were on about it. I thought they were definitely Norwich last season as well. Yeah, it were Norwich yeah. because I remember I'd got off. I were on a flight, so I got off my flight to the airport, and obviously the first thing I did was go on my phone to see what the lead score was, and I actually couldn't find what the score were on Twitter because it literally were just loads of people talking about the white noise incident. So I was like, fucking <laughs> score is it though? Then we got beat as well. You didn't want to know that. No, I got we got beat. We're at three one. Fucking... Yeah. 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 We yeah, go dark days. Long. Yeah, I mean, also, was, it, was it talking about like on this day today? Was it was it yesterday that was the, the year anniversary of the whole Aston Villa debacle? Yeah, well, when it, was it yesterday or uh, the, it earlier in the I week? Mean, all day mixed into one at the minute. Yeah, um, but yeah, just thought I'd raise that. Just that was yesterday. Another it was it yesterday. And today, one, we're at one of the craziest things I've ever seen at a football game. Today's today is the twenty-four year anniversary, I suppose, of the famous Kevin Keegan "I Love It" interview. Right, yeah. Bit more, which bit was more trivia which and nostalgia was, for you. Yeah, and it was after he'd beaten Leeds as well. Yeah, and before I was born. It's a mate. It's a mate. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing, actually, how like a lot of kind of. Uh, kind of iconic and famous or infamous things involved leads like you know the the kind of legend well it's not legend it actually happened but the whole Graham Sooners getting duped by Ali Dyer and bringing him on saying he was George Weir's cousin <laughs> yeah and playing and bringing him on uh, for Latissic that was against Leeds yeah maybe and that's I'll... something that we can actually like we've got loads of time on his hands I mean, sure, we could make a podcast out of this. Uh, a Legion United <laughs> conspiracy. Well, it's not even conspiracies, it's just involved in shenanigans. Just, in, just involved. It's even yeah. if we're just the opposition of something that's crazy that's going on, yeah. That's the yeah. podcast. I mean, nothing's more crazier than looking like you're going to win a league and then you're getting a global pandemic. <laughs> I think that's that is... it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so to a second gone. I was gonna say I think for the first time this week I've actually started to really worry that the whole will win the league and not go up is rearing really for me at the minute. You're really worried about that? To worry I'm, about that. I'm more worried about the season fucking not happening. <laughs> like it's just kaput, void, done. That's, that's, that's my... what I mean. 
Oh, that's sorry, what I, mean. I, thought it meant, I thought it meant like go up without it being like go up. Oh as... no, no, no. I mean, I mean, I mean them stopping or not finishing the season. And then us not as a result of that not going up. Yeah, I see. I see. I mean, I'm still worried. I, I talked about it a few weeks ago about the 30th of June with the contracts and stuff like that because now uh, yeah. teams in um, Holland and France have stopped theirs. It, it then starts to get a bit awkward with them. Mm. I guess we need to be started and at least a bit the way through. Playing to get before then. I think if we don't start before then, then it's not starting at all. Before June. Yeah, before the yeah, end, you... before the thirtieth of June. Yeah, 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 yeah. It has to be at least partially way through. Well, enough. FIFA have given the Premier League, I think, until the twenty fifth of May to make a decision and to make a plan, basically to. Rec- to report on a conference call on the 27th of May of what they're actually going to do. Yeah. So... Which I think will work too. If they can get it... If that at that point they say, right, we can start next week, that'll maybe give you enough time playing Tuesday, Saturday, or spread it over however many days in the month of June Yeah. to get that finished before then. I think this idea of continuing it until it finishes and then going straight into the next season I just don't think that'll work no I mean you got I mean, I, I don't I struggle to see there being a transfer window if I'm completely honest yeah and that'll be big for someone like us because we've gone with a team that's probably over overachieving if we go up we're going to have to strengthen and if we went oh, up yeah. with this team exactly the same team then we probably might come straight back down. We might do all right because of the the work work ethic of the team, but you'd want to have. I mean, well, we'd only have one centre back. Yeah, you'd need some. So yeah, we'd have to be bringing some money. In. Yeah. It's all True. it's all the politics that comes with it. I'm sure it'll be all ironed out eventually. But yeah, do you know? I mean, the, the only thing is without the transfer window is. Everyone's going to be in the same boat, at least. So all three yeah. or two or three promoted side, if it was to happen, are all going to be in the same boat. Um, and every team, you know, above <laughs> us who've just survived in the Premier League, are going to be in the same boat again. So we'll see. Maybe Newcastle won't be able to spend the millions after all. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> as well. Maybe they scrap the transfer window. Why don't you say sign players when, just... when you want? Yeah, go back to how it used to be. I don't know. Because that used to be good. Like when we signed David Healy and they were sort of, there were rumours we were looking at him and then we played him. I think he came to Ellen Road with Preston. The cop sang his name for 90 minutes. He had a shocking game and then we signed him day after. I miss (laughs) times like that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you forget about it, don't you? It's not that long ago where you can just sign players whenever. What were it, 2003? Maybe a bit after that for champions. I don't know. Well, David David Ealy signed in two thousand and four, I believe. I think. Yeah, they were first year in championship, so it might have been maybe two thousand and five. We took it on properly. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't realize David Ealy played for Man United. To be honest. Yeah. Well, that'll sort of lead us on to. Well, we were talked about Paul Balfour Jackson last week, but there was an article in the Athletic today or in the last oh, yesterday. That was seamless. Um, <laughs> about Adrian. Yeah, good article. And uh, yeah, I read that today. And about oh, I just wanted to talk about players like him who had this hype, and then never really sort of lived up to it. And like you can think of, like, we talked about Balfour Jackson last week, or. Mm. Ravel Morrison, another Man United one, that have um, sort of had all this hype and then have gone on to do nothing. At least uh, Adrian's had a little bit of a career sort of thing. But the same, just chopping and changing team every year because he's not really doing anything. Mm. It's just crazy how many people are like that. The Ravel Morrison one's interesting because I remember when he were playing reserve football at Man United, and I remember one of my 
close mates who are playing football with, he, he, he showed me this video and watch this, like, guy's unbelievable, he's going to be a world beater, like, he's actually, he's, he's unbelievable. And we watched and I thought, fuck me, he's, he's quality. And then he made yeah. a few first team appearances at Man United. And then I remember him moving to West Ham as well. He scored a really good solo goal for West Ham, but he just never seemed to do anything of, you know, on a consistent basis. Like, yeah. I'm pretty sure he's played in, like, Mexico. Uh, Atlas. Yeah, I think he did. Yeah, yeah, he went, yeah. And it's almost like he's trying to make it work so hard, but it's just not kind of happening. But we've yeah, seen I a don't lot know of that at Leeds. I don't know if he's got um, a bit of an attitude as well, though. You don't know, do you? No, but I think from what, think, what we've sort of heard... Think... Yeah, there's there's always been those, those things in particular about him. Um I think there's probably a balance, isn't there, between all these players like, I mean, some infamous ones uh, like Freddie Adu, the American mm, yeah. kid who got like the, the million pound endorsement from Nike when he was like 12 or whatever. Um, Curlon, can you remember that Brazilian guy who he did the, the old seal move and he like were heading it around and running yeah. past players, headed it past him and all these kind of things that, we're all part of like my adolescence and all these players that are going to be world beaters or anything like that and never ever did anything in the game you know despite and you know uh, it's probably a balance between maybe attitude or maybe just the fact that they should not have been like hyped to that to that yeah. level and, and that's what they've picked up on on that Adrian um, interview is the fact that it's just really unhelpful that anybody with any sort of promise at a young level from um, Flamengo just gets labelled the next Zico and then it just it just yeah. hangs around their neck like an absolute albatross and it, it's more of a hindrance than than that. And everyone said about Adrian, it's like, and there's quotes from Redfern in that article that says like, you know, you'll do something in training and you go, Jesus, you know, that, that's good. That's, but we just, we couldn't put up with his inconsistency at the time. We were yeah. battling for our lives. Mm. We were looking like we could go down and I couldn't trust him to go out on a field because he couldn't reproduce that that all the time. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, that, that it's just one of them and it's just kind of that's just followed him around everywhere he's gone. But everywhere he was always a big fan for. I mean, I remember I remember when he came in, I was so excited. <laughs> yeah. I was so excited for a you know, a Brazilian player like that who came with all this and, you know, and things weren't very good at Leeds at the time. You thought and he was shit hot and football manager that season as well. And you're thinking, this is it. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> as well, though, you look at the environment they're coming into. Like, we have a lot of patience with our own young players. We've got a lot of patience for our young people. I think as a fan base, everyone would agree with that. But any player that comes in, especially with promise, that we've paid a fee for or we're loaning, you know, that we're paying for high wages, there's bit of a there's that massive expectation already so yeah. it's almost like you know if you are not as good as I think you are then it's going to go downhill from there and it's obviously the confidence thing and what it's like you know everyone or everyone that's played for for Leeds uh, have al- always spoke about what it's like to play Ellen Road it's like to play for Leeds United like to wear, wear that white shirt so you know it's, it's almost like a you know it it's it's a really tough move to say the least yeah. um and like you said, Raggy, given the circumstances, we're kind of it wasn't exactly a great atmosphere at Leeds. We were fighting for his life and stuff like that. So you know, it, it, it were never really given, you know, the the best kind of platform. But he never really took the opportunity with both hands either, I suppose. Yeah, hmm. it seems to be the case of on in Adrian's sort of career that that's the same thing in every sort of club since he left Flamengo. Mm. That there, there was the moments of brilliance, but never enough, and it was never. It was always liked, but teams never wanted to sort of keep him and keep him on and stuff like that. Where did where where is he gone? Where is he? What's he doing? Does he... He's back in Brazil he's back now. In Brazil, but I think he's on loan from um, a Swiss side, Sion. Sion, yeah, something like that. Apparently, there's a story on on the article in the Athletic that um, it was Sion was playing in the next day, and he ended up in a casino in like Cannes or something like that in a French casino. 
Mm. And he only sort of went just to enter this competition. He didn't think he'd get to the end of it. And then because he got to the end of it, he couldn't make they wanted all the team if you were he won't play anyway, but if you wanted they wanted all the team to go to travel with them. Because he made it to the final, I think he won like thirteen grand in yeah, this did, poker yeah. final. And because he did he got to the final and won that, he didn't make the team. And I think he ended up getting fined and had to give half of that money back. <laughs> So that yeah. was worth it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's... Um, I remember the move. I remember it because it was so... You, know, you said it was good on Football Manager. It was so good on FIFA as well. Mm. <laughs> and then, obviously, like, I were a teen at the time, so I got like, so... I was so excited. But I remember then there were all this, like, conspiracy around his transfer to Leeds as well, you know, because they were on loan somewhere and then suddenly re- returned to his parent club and then come into Leeds and it was just all... Like, yeah, they've smoke got... And mirrors. Really weird sort of third party. I'm not. I think FIFA have cracked down on it in the last few years. But you could own like companies could own players. So right. a team would own like thirty percent, so they could play. But then the company had earn like own the rest of it. Okay. And um, so because it was a loan, you wasn't really loaning them off the team. You was loaning them off a company. All right. Which was. I don't think the FA likes that. They're very against that in England because that was the whole thing with um, Mascherano and Tevez, yeah, and yeah. that they weren't, they shouldn't really have been transferred to West Ham, albeit on loan, because of the rules behind it. That was part of Sheffield United's argument, I think. Yeah, it even says in the Mascherano article though that it, Chilino actually helped us with that because. It failed to pay the fees to this company. Yeah. So when the FA actually invested it, it investigated it, we'd actually breached no problem things because Chilino hadn't paid the fees that he should have. Fucking hell. Good old Chilino. <laughs> eh? We've we've come such. I know we say it all the time we mention, but we've come such a long way from that kind of bullshit, man. Mad, yeah. isn't it? Like that is literally like, I don't know. I, I imagine a Chilino documentary would be up there with Tiger King, to be honest. It probably would. It would be that crazy. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It'd be like fucking... Oh, I don't even want to talk. Well, think about it. It'd be crazy. It wouldn't surprise me if someone got fed to a lion in that as well. Genuinely. <laughs> like, it just will not Yeah, that'd be crazy. That'd have that'd be been a very good documentary. Any filmmakers who have... Who want an idea? You need something to do after all this lockdown to make yourself some good money. Come and talk to me. Yeah, because <laughs> so I think good talk to Massimo Cellino. Yeah, and yeah. his daughter, and his and his sons, <laughs> <laughs> and Matt Smith. <laughs> <laughs> it could 